When you're climbing a mountain without a rope, are you sure that you're not going to fall to your death? I mean, the truth is, you can't know. I mean, I don't know. I was raised by scientists, and I'm thinking, well, there's always some percentage chance that you're going to fall. At 26, alpinist Colin Haley is part of a small subset of climbers dedicated to climbing the world's most difficult and dangerous mountains in lightning quick style. Sometimes, even without the safety of a rope. To this core group, highest doesn't mean hardest. They are looking beyond the relatively gentle slopes of Mount Everest. People ask me all the time if I want to climb Everest. Non-climbers generally have this impression that the highest means the hardest, but Everest is not a difficult climb. Someone with little climbing experience can get guided up is not difficult. In 2010, there were 516 successful summit beds on Mount Everest, which means to the world's best alpinists, Everest is pretty much a hike in the hills. I have much more interest in mountains that, regardless of their altitude, are difficult to climb because they're big and steep. I mean, the bottom line is you're just trying to find the hardest thing possible. For a lot of the routes in Patagonia or Pakistan, you have to be a really good rock climber, you have to be a really good ice climber, you have to be extremely fit, you know, just as much as anyone climbing Everest or K2. These mountain faces can be two to three times the size of Yosemite's El Capitan, with up to 12,500 feet of straight up relief. Speed and efficiency are essential to survival, so the pros and cons of every bit of gear are weighed before a big route. Sometimes, alpinists forgo tents and sleeping bags. I was thinking for water bottles, we've got the four liter dromedary cached. Yeah. I was thinking we take just that and two Nalgene's. Climbing a route that big, with that little equipment leaves you a small margin of error. On a recent trip to Alaska's Mount Foraker, Haley tested the boundaries of this light and fast approach. After completing a new route, a storm moved in. They had less than a half a day's worth of food left. Without anything to sleep or food or water, you're just gonna die pretty quick. Haley's only option was to keep moving in blizzard conditions. After 72 hours of constant exertion without sleep, he made it safely back to camp. I love battling through a storm and, and you know, having snow blow down my neck and stuff like that. It doesn't sound like a fun thing, but just the intensity of that situation is something that I really enjoy and thrive on. Yeah, I would consider what I do a fringe activity, but definitely anyone who is dedicated to alpine climbing accepts the fact that they might die doing it.